Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome now to Tech Tuesday, your weekly look at everything to do with technology within golf. And I did have this episode recorded, wrapped up, done, but I'm having to redo it because I'm at Magado Golf and Country Club over here in Portugal. I'm playing in the Pro-Am tomorrow with some competition winners through the whole 19 app. However, it's just been announced Rory McIlroy signed with TaylorMade and that was not in the original Tech Tuesday, so I'm having to redo it. And it does seem after much testing, after much playing around, Rory has signed with TaylorMade and it is a full bag deal. So bag, 14 clubs and a ball as well. And this is another high profile signing for TaylorMade. They've already signed Tiger Woods this year back in January. No one really knows how much for, but I imagine the clauses in Tiger's contract are getting ticked off pretty quickly because he's not playing. However, Rory is a genuine number one title contender in the world now. He's playing great golf, he's just been married. Can he get to that top spot again? An unseat DJ, who just happens to be another TaylorMade player. And there's Jason Day as well, who just happens to be another TaylorMade player. I think I can see what TaylorMade are trying to do. And they are going at it hard. I mean, we are talking big names here. Jason Day, DJ, Rory. These are players at the top of the game. Sergio just won the Masters. Justin Rose almost won the Masters. John Rahm is on fire at the moment. They are really signing up the big boys. Now, as far as a tactic, there are arguments for and against. So some people say that really signing tour pros does not make a difference. I did a bit of a poll on this a while ago. Many people were saying that Really, what tour pros are using does not influence their buying habits at all, while other people are saying, actually, it really, really does, and people would only buy Nike stuff because Rory was playing it. So getting him on side with TaylorMade, obviously we don't know the costings of this. It looks like it's a long-term deal. Is it going to be worth it? Guys, get commenting below. I'd love to know what you think about this. There are also some pictures out circulating of what is in his bag. So it looks like he's gonna be using the M2 driver, some new prototype irons, the pictures I will throw up now, which look really, really nice. And also the milled grind wedges, which are my favorite wedges. So there you go, it's, it's nice. He's obviously chosen tailor-made because of the wedges, yeah. Nothing to do with the money, I'm sure. So what do you think about those clubs? Those irons, I think, really do look amazing. And what a signing, what a timing of this as well. I mean, you can really say that TaylorMade are on the ascendancy here. You know, you've got DJ at the top, you know, you've got the players that I've just mentioned. They do seem to be on an upward trend. And if they are still looking to sell, so Adidas are still looking to sell them, then surely this can be a little bit of a carrot, unless it's costing that much that it doesn't make business sense at the end of the day. However, I can really only see this as a positive. I can only see this getting tailor-made back in the headlines again. However, there are fours and against. As mentioned, will it influence buying habits? How much does it cost? I mean, Rory is not going to be coming cheap. You can probably say that he will perform. Uh, I mean, Rory is still, I don't think, at the peak of his game. I still think he can get better. The Rory has just posted this. TP5X looks like that's the ball he's gonna be using. Uh, when he switches up, he's got his irons, which are the Proto ones. That doesn't look uh, like one of the spider putters. It looks like one of the TP putters, but again, we'll have to see. Uh, full range of driver there. Looks like a three wood and a five wood. It's gonna be interesting to see what that comes out like. So interesting times. And again, comment below, let me know what you think. But there is plenty of other news, which I've not managed to cover in the last few weeks. I thought this episode was gonna be all settled and super. However, there are a few more things to have a look at. One interesting thing which I've seen, which a few people have already reported on, is that Ping has started to purchase some of the old Nike patents. Now I'm going off online reports here, Golf WRX, My Golf Spy, a few others. And it looks like there has been a single length iron component bought, a patent bought, which is interesting enough. One thing which they have got is the process to make the RZM plastic material. Now, when we were out in Archer Fields a few years ago now, when the uh, Vapor Fly range was being brought out, they were really banging on about the patents that they had for this RZM material, this resin material, whichever way you want to look at it. And they were really proud of it. And I have to say, I was actually one person who was disappointed that Nike E stopped making clubs because I thought that their most recent ones that they brought out were good and I loved the ball. And that was all using this resin material. So if they purchase that, it's gonna be interesting to see what that looks like and how they can actually bring that into their designs. They also got the patent for the aerodynamic features. So it was like the fish scales on top of the driver. Now, Ping already used the turbulator technology, so maybe they could introduce this as well. I mean, what uh, Ping was saying is basically they've got these as almost 
a utility, so stuff that they could use if they really wanted to. But it would not make sense to be very specific about the patents that they bought and then not go on to use them. There wouldn't be any point in that. And like I said, I was pretty impressed with the Nike stuff before they stopped making it. So I think we should start to see something similar to what was in the Nike Woods and the Nike drivers maybe make their way into the Ping stuff. But Ping are already a leader in the field of technology within golf. So I'm intrigued by this and to see what will come out of it. And again, guys, comment below, let me know what you think. Now, last but not least, let's talk about PXG because when talking about liking milled wedges and I was testing out the TaylorMade milled wedges last week and really, really enjoyed them. Um, PXG brought out their own milled wedge for a slightly different price. So the 0311T wedge starts at $650. $650 is what it starts at. And the 100% milled wedges can go up to $800. I mean, looking at the construction, looking at how they're made, it looks fantastic. They're 100% milled. They have the distinctive PXG design with the weighting system in there as well. Um, the extreme dark version up to $750. What's the one that goes up to $800? It's the, oh wow. It's called the Darkness Wedge, and it goes up to $800. Madness, absolutely madness. Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Bit of a rushed uh, Tech Tuesday this, like I said, I wasn't expected to have to redo it, uh, but I think it must have been worth it because you know this is big, big news within golf, and I would love to know what you think about it. So guys, subscribe to the channel, make sure you follow me on my other social media platforms as well, and we'll see you down here next time. Sorry as well if it's a bit echoey. It's quite an empty, Hello, hello, hello. Still echoey, it's fine.